Intermittent fasting does more harm than good from the current research we've got, which is why the latest clinical guidelines do not promote it. Study out scientists discovering there may be, listen to this, zero benefits to the popular intermittent fasting diet. When you restrict eating for a certain number of hours throughout the day. But some nutrition experts argue fasting can lead to bad habits. So some physicians and scientists are warning about weight management tools like intermittent fasting lately, but do not really offer good reason in my opinion. Now, one of the studies often cited titled Effects of Time-Restricted Feeding on Body Weight and Metabolism, a Systematic Review and Meta-Analysis, uses the Ramadan fast for their intermittent fasting group in a majority of their data. Now, in this religious fast, participants fast from dawn to dusk and are not allowed to consume water during their fast. So this is a very different scenario, right? At night, they usually break their fast with high carb and fiber foods and high fiber foods, right? So this is not intermittent fasting for weight and health reasons, really. It's, it's for religious reasons, right? Another study to disprove the benefits of intermittent fasting is titled Effects of Time-Restricted Eating on Weight Loss and Other Metabolic Parameters in Women and Men with Overweight or Obesity. The TREAT, so T-R-E-A-T, Randomized Clinical Trial. And that has subjects in the fasting group eat at libitum during a shortened uh, eating period. So whatever they want, whenever they want, right? Uh, while the control group, interestingly, eats scheduled meals, which is something that I would usually recommend for the intermittent fasting group, right? Again, this is very backwards from uh, medical intermittent fasting. And data from these studies does not reflect actual intermittent fasting results, in my opinion. Another criticism of intermittent fasting is muscle loss. And this is noticed, actually noted on DEXA scans in some of the participants in the before mentioned studies, right? For good reason, in my opinion. And I think this is due to poor meal timing and most of all, lack of sufficient protein in the eating window. And we see similar findings in patients that are using the drug semaglutide or Ozempic Wegovi, which is a GLP-1 agonist for diabetes and weight loss. And if not instructed properly, these patients simply decrease total caloric intake, including protein. This is, of course, a big mistake. I highly recommend, as long as you're healthy, to always meet your protein goal of 0.8 to 1 gram per pound of body weight per day, regardless of the length of your eating window. Furthermore, uh, patients should be instructed to implement resistance training in their exercise regimen, right? Critics also point out that the benefit of autophagy often does not fully present until a, you know, day three or day four of an extended fast. So in other words, it would not have the same effect as observed in rodents that um, enter autophagy much sooner than us. And that's true. So I don't disagree with the statement, but I mean, we still have to appreciate that autophagy, even at a much lower rate, has been observed as soon as 14 to 16 hours into a fast in humans. And... Um, so, you know, while this is not as profound as an extended fast, obviously, it still yields benefits. So intermittent fasting done properly and intermittently, as the name implies, is a very powerful tool that has helped me and a majority of my weight management patients to lose body fat and become healthier while maintaining or gaining muscle. So this is actually really possible. I usually instruct people uh, to use um, intermittent fasting only as the name implies, intermittently about one to two times per week. Now, this will vary from person to person. I generally, I generally discourage one meal a day or even two meals a day eating patterns. However, I have seen those work in some individuals with positive health, of, uh, health outcomes, and this was quite surprising to me. So I used to say, no, just don't do this. This is wrong. We don't, in the literature, this shows that this is not sufficient, but for some people, this does work, and we have to appreciate that, right? And they didn't even have a net loss of lean muscle tissue. So while this would not work for me, or even I would argue the majority of people, we have to remind ourselves that individuals can vary greatly in their metabolic response. Point number two is eat scheduled meals about every three hours during your eating windows and don't eat between your meals, right? Number three, delay by two hours from the time you wake up, but do not skip your breakfast. This should be your largest and most important meal, high in protein, 30 to 50 grams in my opinion, moderate in carbs and low in fat. Number four, prioritize protein with each meal. Of course, check with your primary care doctor if you're healthy. But if healthy, again, I recommend to consume 0.8 to 1 gram of protein per pound per day of ideal body weight, right? Of, of your ideal body weight. 
Number five, on fasting days, practice early time restricted feeding. So skip your last meal, followed by a 14 to 18 hour fasting window. Make sure to hit your protein goal during your eating window. That's very important. So using intermittent fasting this way can help you with your health and weight while maintaining lean muscle, especially if you include resistance training in your exercise routine. 